In this video, we're going to take a look at how to calculate and measure enthalpy changes in solutions. So you might have a delta H of solution that you're calculating or some sort of delta H of N. So maybe our neutralization. This is for neutralization. I'm not going to write the whole word, but you get the idea. Okay. Um, so to measure such changes, we need an isolated system or we need a calorimeter. And in the, this particular example, we use something called a coffee cup calorimeter. And that is because it is basically a styrofoam cup, double insulated, so you double cup it. And then with inside here, you've got your aqueous solution, so mostly made up of water. And then you have your reaction in here. And uh, you have a stir put in, you have a thermometer to measure the temperature change. And then you have a lid that's insulated here. So we make several assumptions when we use one of these coffee cup calorimeters. The first being that no heat can escape to outside the environment from the calorimeter, which is not true. A bit of heat does get out. Uh, the second assumption is any heat absorbed by the calorimeter is negligible, which is not necessarily true, but it just helps make the calculations easier. And finally, we assume Dilute aqueous solutions are assumed to have the same density and specific heat capacity as water. So all three of these assumptions do make calculations easier, but they are also possible experimental errors within calorimetry itself. So you would want to talk about all three of these assumptions if you were talking about experimental error associated with a calorimetry. So to um, take a look at how we're going to approach these calculations, they're a little bit more complex. First, we want to take a look at using Q equals MC delta T, how much energy is absorbed or released by the solutions, which is our solution, which is our surroundings. So here we're making those assumptions that we have the same density and specific heat capacity as pure water, even though we're talking about uh, dilute aqueous solutions. We're then going to determine the Q of the reaction by using the law of conservation of energy. So the Q of the reaction is always going to have the negative sign of the Q of the surroundings. Basically what that means is what's happening in the surroundings, the opposite is happening within the reaction. And then we're going to calculate delta H using delta H as the Q of the reaction divided by moles of the reactant. And if you have a limiting reactant, you do need to consider it here. So we're going to look at two examples. The first example here is dissolving some KCl in water. And we have an initial temperature and we've got a final temperature. So we're looking at the molar enthalpy of a solution of potassium chloride. It's kind of helpful to write out a reaction of what's going on here. So KCl solid is dissolving in water. We don't really need to show the water here because it's just a spectator. But it's going to then break down into its ions. So calcium, I mean potassium ions and chloride ions. Everything's in a one-to-one -one ratio, so we're all good there. Okay, so let's start with Q of our surroundings is equal to mc delta t. Now here we're assuming that taking this 7.46 grams of KCl and dissolving it in water is not really changing the volume very much or at all. So we're just going to use the volume of water which is 100 mils and we're assuming it has the same density of water so we're assuming it's 100 grams. We're going to use the specific heat capacity of water because again we're making that assumption. And then we've got our delta T. So we got 20.0 minus 24.1. Because the temperature is going down, we know that this should be endothermic. So we should get a delta H that is a positive value at the end of this. So something to keep in mind. Okay, so our Q of our surroundings is going to be negative 1713.8 8 joules. Now using our next step, our Q of our reaction is the negative of our Q of our surroundings. And so negative 1713, taking the negative that of that becomes 1713.8 joules. And it's kind of helpful to put that in kilojoules now so we don't forget. 
So 1.7138 kilojoules. Now we didn't need to divide this by the number of moles. And so we're going to take the moles of KCL that we have here. So mass divided by molar mass, we've got 7.46 grams. We're just considering this mass now. And then the molar mass, 74.55, which gives us 0 0.10006 and so on. So our delta H of solution is going to be the plus 17138 over 0 0.10006 or it's equal to plus 17.1 kilojoules per mole. Good time to stop. Take a look. Does it make sense for our reaction? Delta H is positive, so it does make sense. So that's a nice little check to make sure you've done it right. This check is really important here because Enthalpies of solution can be endothermic or exothermic. So you can't just make the assumption here. You have to do that little mental check for yourself. All right, our second example is a neutralization reaction. So we're taking our acid in our base, making a salt in water, and we're given a delta H of negative 53.4. Really important to know, exothermic uh, sorry, neutralization reactions are always, always, always exothermic. So you should always get a negative delta H value here. Now this question is a little bit different because we're taking 55 mils of the same concentration of both reactants. We're mixing them together at 21.4 degrees Celsius. We're trying to figure out the final temperature of the mixture. So we would want to check and see if either reactant is limiting first. Because they are the same volume and the same concentration, they are going to give us the same moles. Because it is a one-to-one -one reaction, it doesn't matter which one we pick. So we're just gonna pick one. We're gonna find the moles. We're gonna do N equals C times V. So we're gonna take 1.30 times 0 0.0550. We're using the 55 mils only because we are just focusing on just one of the reactants here, okay? So that gives us a number of moles of 0 0.0715. And then from here, we're kind of working backwards because we need to get to the temperature. So we can figure out the Q of the reaction by taking our delta H, and now we need to multiply it by 1,000 to get it into joules and we need to multiply it by the number of moles. Okay, so that is going to give us a negative 3818.1 joules. And then our Q of our surroundings is going to be the negative Q of our reaction. So it's going to be plus 3818.1 joules. From here, we can substitute this end into MC delta t. Okay, so what values are we putting in? Well, we've got 3818 for our q, and the mass we want to use here now is our solution, our final solution. So we need to take those two volumes and add them together to get 110.0 grams. We're making the assumption it's the same density as water. We're using the specific heat capacity of water, and then we're going to use our delta t here. So if we solve for our delta T, then we get 8.3038. And remembering delta T is T final minus 21.4 is 8.3038. So our final temperature, 29.7 degrees Celsius. Do a little double check here. Make sure, does that make sense? With an exothermic system, you would expect the temperature to go up, so it does make sense. So that is how you calculate either enthalpy changes for solution, dissolving something in solution, or for neutralization. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.